The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Needham. As usual, I'll be your host for today. Uh, so welcome to this uh, Daniel Code webinar uh, at a time when the market is showing uh, more than usual excitement, which is uh, good news for traders. Um, how's the sound, folks? If any of you uh, could just type a message in the question box, please, and uh, tell me if you're getting the sound all right. Can everyone hear me well? Okay, David, I'll shift here. That's good. Charles, Daryl, oh, lots of folks. Yes, we've got a Peter. Hi, guys, all of you. We've got a pretty good uh, turn up today, Benjamin. Thank you. Uh, we're all loud and clear. I had to uh, get a new headset uh, this morning. Um, these uh, pieces of equipment uh, last uh, almost indefinitely in my life, unless you happen to have children. And once you uh, lend things to your children, even though they may be university age, uh, strange things seem to happen and your uh, equipment uh, comes back, but uh, it's usually not in the same condition that you lent it out. So uh, uh, there's uh, a problem. So the new headset's working. That's fine. Uh, anyway, uh, folks, good evening to you in the Northern Hemisphere. Good morning to you. Uh, in uh, uh, down here in the Great Southlands, Australia, New Zealand. Hello, Sage. P8, uh, Peter here, Peter. Uh, also from uh, New Zealand. Good to have all of you guys here, folks. Um, we're going to um, spend some time looking at uh, what markets are really doing um, and um, uh, what we're likely to see in the uh, immediate future. Uh, it's nice to have uh, some volatility. Uh, we've had. Uh, some great trading results. I had an email from uh, Brian, who's a pretty constant uh, uh, attendee at these webinars, and he's been learning an awful lot uh, from the uh, Tradecraft, Tradecraft um, webinars that I've been doing, just uh, practical stuff on, on how to trade. And um, he tells me that he has uh, uh, increased his um, trading account by a multiple of six. Uh, in the uh, last uh, fortnight. So pretty uh, staggering trading. It's great trading. We've got uh, really good volatility and um, these occasions don't come often enough. Uh, however, one of the things that does happen when uh, markets start to create a little bit of volatility um, is that the media gets very excited. Um, I don't know if they really do get excited or it's just their job to get excited, but uh, reading some of the better known uh, trading uh, websites and commentary, um, you'd be uh, quite uh, uh, forgiven for believing that the uh, world is about to end, um, and uh, uh, that's not so. Uh, and I wanted to uh, just try and put things into perspective for you today. There's uh, nothing new or exciting about this. I just recap back to the uh, end of June, early July. I published. Uh, an article for you, S&P in a cocked hat, correction cometh, it was called, um, and uh, the uh, fourth seal uh, has uh, issued in the meantime four important alerts uh, in equity markets saying the same thing, that uh, a correction was coming, and um, uh, I think uh, you've been well prepared for this uh, correction we've got, and uh, let's hope it's a great deal more. Um, I don't subscribe to this. Uh, idea that uh, it's great for markets to go up all the time. Uh, that's a view that's aspired very much by the buy and hold brigade and as futures traders uh, we certainly don't fall into that category. Uh, we don't really care whether the markets go up or go down as long as they go um, and the further and faster they go the better it is for us. So um, the old racing saying back self-interest uh, you know it's always trying um, is pretty true and uh, our self-interest is for volatility, um, and if a lot of people are getting scared and worried about that, um, uh, they need only learn how to trade futures properly and uh, hedge the rest of their portfolios, and they can sleep soundly at night. But of course, they don't do that. Uh, so let's uh, move on uh, as we uh, need to. Um, let me see if we can get things mobile here. Uh, the page you're seeing uh, now is our compliant page. hasn't quite. Uh, reached you yet. Uh, we must have a fairly slow internet connection. That should be there by now. Uh, there it is. Looks like we've got a slow internet. Um, and um, this tells you basically that there's uh, risk involved in tr all trading, and particularly there's risk in uh, trading futures. Uh, and I'm 
uh, required to show you this compliance page uh, every time we have a webinar and uh, I suggest you read it. The details are all on our website um, and also here's our uh, final slide which tells you if you want to have free trials of anything uh, you simply click on the uh, link at the Daniel Code website uh, which we'll be seeing later uh, and follow the prompt uh, any problems contact Terry support at the Daniel Code dot com uh, and he will be happy to give you uh, a free trial of any of our products uh, and that's the uh, only way I know um, to properly assess whether uh, our products are suitable for you or not okay so let's now uh, turn to the charts today we're going to talk about um, uh, we're going to talk about uh, SP trend here we are uh, we're going to talk about uh, equities uh, in particular and uh, gold which I know is of great interest to all of you so um, what you're looking at now we're going to start off with uh, equities um, and uh, you're now looking at uh, a 24 day chart uh, of the um, S&P index uh, and you've all seen this chart before or if you've been to a webinar before we rolled this stuff out pretty well every fortnight to try and make sure you uh, always are aware of the big picture in markets even though uh, we don't trade this sort of uh, way we, t we tend to trade uh, one to five one to seven day uh, markets but um, uh, you do need to keep this big picture uh, and particularly at a time like now when the uh, websites are yapping and the fear mongers are beating the drums uh, it's very easy if you're uh, particularly if you're new to this business uh, to uh, get worried or get uh, concerned uh, by what these people are saying and it affects your trading because it induces a bias um, in you which we try to avoid now um, the reality is that as you can see from this chart um, these markets uh, are completely ruled by the Daniel Code time cycles and price cycles um, and we have been telling you about a correction coming uh, for a number of months so you should have been well prepared for it uh, and this uh, this is our longest term chart that we use uh, this is uh, each bar on this chart is created uh, from 24 trading days um, and that's why uh, it's called the 24 day chart um, so let's just uh, tighten in a bit here uh, and let me show you <coughs> uh, more of uh, what's been happening um, and <coughs> this uh, these red lines incidentally folks if you're not uh, familiar with uh, our material uh, these red lines are what we call fourth seal lines uh, and uh, you can call them fourth degree lines if you prefer it doesn't matter uh, but they're basically a proprietary forecasting method that I uh, have invented over the last uh, 20 or 30 years and as you can see they're pretty deadly um, and sometimes what happens is you'll get um, an intersection uh, as I'm showing you now with the highlighter uh, where two of these uh, fourth and fifth seal lines cross um, and of course the longer the term of the chart uh, the more powerful they are and this is our, the longest term chart we use this is a, as I've said a 24 day chart um, so uh, back here you can see that the market moved up into this intersection uh, of two fourth seal lines uh, what happened next so that was uh, a period for um, uh, ended in let me find my other cursor uh, you got to swap these things around here you, here we are um, uh, so this was uh, this was uh, the end of June this is when the uh, S&P in a cocked hat article was written um, and now remember that these uh, time cycles which you're going to see at two bars time they are accurate to plus or minus one period for a technical reason I'm going to show you uh, but anyway we moved on here's August um, this period ended August the 4th the market tried to rally through the four steel line was refused and turned back uh, the next uh, bar uh, expired September the 8th uh, the market again attempted to make new highs and was stopped as you can see exactly on the uh, fourth seal line um, the next bar here we are this is the bar expiring October the 10th 
it opened right on the four seal line and down it went. So what was it waiting for? It hit this cocked hat here, I've explained to you in the article what that's about, um, and it then took another two periods uh, before it started its descent. And let's move this on so you can see exactly what I've done here. Um, and what it was waiting for, of course, was this 59 time cycle right here. 59 is the dominant Daniel Code number. Uh, it's the dominant uh, time cycle that gives us tops. Uh, <coughs> it's particularly effective on all markets. Um, and it's the traditional number to give us tops. Uh, you can see where this started from. You can start to run these counts, these time counts, uh, from any uh, high or low. Uh, and the reason it's accurate to plus or minus one, degree, one, one period is because it is valid to start the count from either, in this case, a chart low or the closing low. So in this case, if I move this curse for a long one period, it's now on the bar that ends March the 31st, 2009. That is the chart low. That's the lowest low on the chart. Uh, but the period before, uh, which expired February 25, 2009, that actually gave you the closing low. The, the close of that bar um, is less than the close of the next bar. And it's valid to start these counts uh, from either of those uh, bars. Uh, so we're looking for bars primarily that are more than one standard deviation from the mean uh, and then we say that it's valid to start this count. If you want to know a lot about this stuff and become very, very good at forecasting markets, uh, come to one of the Daniel Code tutorials um, and I'll teach you about this stuff in great detail. And as you can see from these charts and uh, anyone who's been following uh, either our fourth seal uh, commentary services or attending these webinars, <coughs> they are quite extraordinary. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so uh, I started this particular count uh, from this uh, bar way back in February uh, the 25th and every one of these turns, the uh, uh, 2007 high, the 2009 low, have all come on these 59 cycles. Uh, but working from this chart to start with the 24-day chart, this is not what we call the crash cycle, uh, which Frank calls the death cycle. I call it the crash cycle. This is not the crash cycle on this chart. It does appear on other charts, as we're going to see. But to be a valid crash cycle, it has to run from a high to a high <coughs> on the first hop, by which I mean it can't be an extension or a variable of 59. It has to be 59 high to high, and we don't have that here. Um, this is running, as you can see, from a low to a high. Uh, but it's quite extraordinary how, despite the fact that this market uh, was trapped by the fourth seal line for uh, uh, the best part of two and a half months, uh, it still waited until that 59 cycle expired. Um, and a lot of you here, you've seen these charts before, you knew uh, exactly what we were heading for. Um, so uh, let's move from there, from the longer, uh, let's now go to our 12 period. Uh, that's a gold chart. We're coming back to that, you gold bugs. We're going to uh, spend a lot of time on uh, gold today as well. Um, so we now move to our next period. Uh, we're back on the S&P. <coughs> and here's the, uh, this is a 12-day chart. Each of these uh, bars is uh, created from 12 trading days. Um, and what you're going to see here on this chart even though it's half the time frame, you're going to see <coughs> exactly the same thing. Uh, here's your red lines. These are fourth seal, fifth seal lines, uh, and they intersect right here at this bar. Um, and if you look at these wave counts coming along here, they're not anything to do with that awful Elliott wave stuff. So if you've been thinking that, wash your mouth out immediately. Uh, this is Daniel Code time cycles. Um, and uh, I suppose it's tempting to think of these things as waves. I uh, do use that expression occasionally, and but as you can see, there's nothing anywhere in there that resembles anything like an idiot wave count unless you're smoking something straight. But anyway, never knock someone else's work. <coughs> I know the guys who do that uh, very well. He's a very, very decent bloke, very clever bloke, very successful. So uh, what's good for them is... Uh, Okay, but it's not something that I have uh, any belief in. Um, and this is what I have belief in uh, here on the 12-day chart. Look at it. Here's your fourth and fifth seal lines intersecting. The market does the same thing. 
it's hit by the lines, it tries to force its way through. Uh, we can make this a bit bigger for you. Uh, if we change tool so you can see a little more clearly. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and here we are. Um, there it gets hit. Here's the crossover in this period. Uh, this is August uh, 4 to August 20. Um, this uh, bar tries to rally. Uh, gets topped off by the by the the fourth or fifth seal line. Here's the next one. This is <coughs> excuse me. I'm still recovering a bit <coughs> from the flu. Uh, <coughs> here's the next one. It tried to rally, um, and look where it closed exactly on that fourth seal line. You can see how those uh, red lines are completely dominating this chart. Um, and then the very next period here, which is uh, September 24, you have two things happening. You have the 59 cycle and an half. Um, our rules for this is uh, Daniel tells us it shall be for a time times and an half. So 89, uh, the black numbers you see there, that's 59 plus an half. Uh, gives you 89, that's the uh, dominant topping cycle uh, for uh, equities. Uh, commodity, soft, most nearly all markets, and also we had a bonus in there's 88, uh, which is twice the number of gold cycle. Gold cycle is 44. Uh, for those of you that are really not up on this stuff, they go, go to the Daniel Code website, click on articles, um, and there are two articles in there. Well, there's about 80, but there's two you want to read. Called, they're called, both called Masterclass. Uh, one is Masterclass, it's about time, and the other one, Okay, I just made an announcement. Has that come back, Glenis? Uh, can you hear me now? Glenis, can you hear me? Okay, looks like we have a little loose connection. Tony, I'm sorry, I was telling you that uh, you did have sound when you were telling me that you didn't. Uh, so uh, you were right and I was wrong, uh, for which I apologise. Uh, we've missed five minutes or so. Uh, let's go back. Uh, everyone can hear me loud and clear now. Uh, let me go back to the previous uh, chart uh, to pick up where I was. We were talking about uh, this chart. This is the 12-day chart, uh, and I was simply emphasizing how, uh, although the market came into conflict with these fourth and fifth seal lines uh, in this period, starting uh, July 17th, in fact, earlier, uh, if you go all the way back here, it started tracking 
uh, the lower of these uh, four seal lines, which then crosses and becomes the upper one, it starts tracking that way back on June the 12th. So uh, next bar couldn't close above it, gave it a high. Next bar couldn't close above it. Next bar couldn't close above it. I mean, it's sounding repetitious on purpose all the way through to this little perler here, uh, which is September the 8th and uh, still closed right on the four seal line. And of course, what it was waiting for was this 89 time cycle. And as soon as that hit, <coughs> and the uh, market has started down. Uh, so that was the 12 uh, day chart we're looking at. We now move to the six day chart. Um, and I showed you two variants of this. The first one I showed you was of the index. That's uh, this one here. And uh, uh, the purpose of this was to show you how these uh, uh, extraordinary fourth and fifth seal lines uh, controlled the market there, there, and again here, and of course with the expiration of the 59, uh, the correction has begun. Uh, now we're more interested in uh, what this really means, and if you uh, look now at the next chart, which will be coming up uh, on your screen uh, in just a moment, uh, it's there now. Um, this is um, the same chart. This is actually the futures chart as opposed to the index chart, um, and uh, uh, this one is running from um, uh, the start. This was the uh, only only real correction in this whole market since uh, uh, September to uh, March 2009. Uh, and this is what we call a Daniel Code trading channel. Um, it's used creating a regression tool. Uh, it's this tool over here. It's called uh, in Trade Navigator. It's called re regression channel. Um, it is not a regression channel. If you use a regression channel. Um, it will fit any set of um, uh, charts you have, uh, and it just gets bigger or smaller to adjust itself. It therefore has no predictive value. Uh, with Daniel Code trading channels, we have um, uh, very firm uh, set rules about how far you can move it and what it does, uh, the main one of which is that we want to make sure that we have uh, the first channel making contact uh, with this point way back here, October 31st, 2011. Uh, and if you keep moving this channel along, eventually it will lose contact with that point. It will no longer be valid. Uh, but uh, here's the easy version of it. Uh, this market has tracked, as you all know, we've talked about it uh, pretty well uh, every fortnight. Uh, this market's simply been tracking up. Uh, this darker line in the middle, this is the median. Uh, one, the first line above it is one standard deviation. First line below the median is one standard deviation, and down here, is two standard deviations. Um, and this is the only correction back here in uh, January 2014 that went to two standard deviations. All these others, uh, it retests there, one standard deviation there, another one 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 there. The stronger one here didn't even get down to the first standard deviation, same here. So these markets, this market has just run within its Daniel Code trading channel uh, since July the 11th without any breakouts. Um, and people don't just don't understand um, how formidable these Daniel Code tools are and um, how organized uh, markets apparently are. If you talk to most people um, about a complex market like the S&P, they tend to say random walk. They tend to say, oh, God, it's up, it's down, we don't know. They don't know what it's doing. That's about the only true statement, and they don't know because they don't have the right tools uh, and they haven't had, <coughs> excuse me, the right training. Uh, but if you follow along with these simple Daniel Code tools, which are available free to all of you, uh, if you're members, uh, you can get these uh, uh, tools in the uh, Daniel Code. It's called the Daniel Code Library at Trade Navigator. Uh, you will keep your sense of perspective about what, what markets are doing. Um, you can see here that we're starting to get interested here because right here where the highlighter is now, which you'll be able to see in just a moment, uh, I think you've got it now, um, that is um, two standard uh, deviations um, from the mean. And that's as far as this market has gone down in a correction since 2011. So that's a very important point. Um, and all we are seeing at the moment is a correction. There's nothing more than that. It's a standard correction. It's a, uh, the ends of it are a little deeper than it has been since 2011, uh, but who can argue possibly 
uh, that this market isn't well and truly overdue uh, and ripe for a decent correction. In fact, we need uh, a far better correction than this. Uh, let us go back for a moment uh, to our 12-day chart um, and let's crunch up the rest of this stuff uh, so we can get a perspective on what, what markets have done. Uh, this is the 2000.com top all the way back here. Um, this was uh, the 9-11 um, uh, crash which actually came in about here, um, in here I think. 9-11, uh, 2001, it's in here, this little bar down here. Uh, this was the great uh, rally. This was, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, the previous Fed governor's irrational exuberance rally. Uh, this was the 2009 uh, crash. This was the Lehman crash. This was the uh, disaster that brought the Fed into all of this uh, nonsense with uh, Bernanke. Um, and look at where this market is now. It just roared up in practically a straight line. Uh, let me push this out to give you this perspective again. Here's your Daniel Code trading channel again, folks. This is on the 24-day chart. And look at it. Since March 2009, this market has worked perfectly within these channels. There's one pullback to one standard deviation. Um, and here's the only other substantial correction which went down at the time to two standard deviations. <coughs> it looks like it's a little bit above it on this chart, but when in real time that was exactly uh, at two standard deviations. Uh, so here's your median going along here. Uh, let me get that other tool for you. So this is the best view of it on these longer term charts, which we don't uh, look at often enough. Uh, but here's your median line coming along here. Uh, and when you look at this, all this market has done is get back to its long-term medium. That's all. Um, and there's yelling and screaming about corrections and the end of the world and <coughs> interesting article today that, uh, you know, bond yields in, um, uh, in Europe are going up. And crikey, the bond yield in, in Greece has gone from 4.5% to 8%. It's a joke. The yield should be 80%. The country's insolvent. Uh, people want to <coughs> keep buying these <coughs> government bonds for countries that are clearly insolvent purely on the premise that at some stage the central banks are going to bail them out. Um, and that's what this, uh, all this uh, interference by central banks has done. It's created massive, massive inflation. Uh, it's not measured properly. Uh, you simply go do your shopping every week, uh, talk to your wife or girlfriend or whoever, uh, does the shopping for you if you're lucky enough to have someone and they will uh, just tell you that your money doesn't uh, go as far now as it used to and that uh, inflation is just really the loss in purchasing power uh, of your dollar and uh, it's really an obscenity uh, and I don't know why the world isn't shouting about it but anyway uh, the rest of the world apart from me and perhaps a few of you uh, seems to adopt this idea that inflation is a good thing it's certainly a great thing for banks and government, um, and uh, uh, nobody else seems to care, which is, you know, that's fine if they don't know that's all the same. But I want you to just suck in this chart because it's important, uh, and it shows you that here is what is really happening. This market has merely gone back to the mean. That's all. Now, where do we want it to go? Well, we don't really have a view as long as it goes. Uh, what we want is movement, but uh, we would expect if this is a serious correction and we have enough evidence uh, to suggest that it is from our Daniel Code time cycles and fourth and fifth seal analysis, we would expect as a minimum that it goes down uh, to one standard deviation from the mean. Uh, and that would be the minimum. Now, uh, that doesn't sound much, and it's not. Uh, it's right here. But let me tell you, in terms of the number of the index, uh, let me get this cursor somewhere near it. You're talking about somewhere around 1,700. And that would only be a correction to one standard deviation from the mean. <coughs> if we got a correction to two standard deviations from the mean, which I earnestly hope we will, that would be down about 1590 or 1600. Now, bear this in mind. Markets that go straight up are unhealthy, dangerous markets. Markets that correct are safe markets. This is not a safe market. It's been force-fed. It's gone up too far too long. It needs a decent correction. And the, what the correction does, it shakes out all the weak hands, but more importantly, 
eventually markets find new support um, and that becomes the new base uh, and that's what this market needs and that's what a lot of the uh, commentaries about oh there's no liquidity oh the market's going down nobody knows where the next true support is it may well be where it is right now because this is once this is the median right here uh, and you can see that this market today uh, closed right on this median at 1862 uh, the, the median is about at 1858 it's uh, you know about the thickness of the, the, the cursor on it so um, nothing exciting is happening guys all we're doing is getting a normal correction uh, we need it to have, make, keep this market healthy. It needs at the minimum to go down to the first standard deviation for the mean, uh, which is down at around 1700 or so. Let's say somewhere about here, around 1720, 1740. Uh, we can firm that up later. And really, it would be great to see a correction uh, down to two standard deviations from the mean, uh, which would have it down about 1600. Um, and that would then start to tell you uh, that this market is regaining some health uh, because it will have to find new support uh, at those sorts of levels and that's uh, that's vital. Okay, so that's what's happening here. It's a normal correction. Uh, we think uh, we're either at the first target now. Uh, the next target on the longer term charts is down around 1700, 1720 uh, and then I'll certainly be talking in a fortnight's time. We'll have a better idea of what it's doing. Uh, I'm hoping this market has a decent two standard deviation correction, gets down to about 1600, but from a trading point of view, <coughs> you only trade the market, you don't trade the forecast. It doesn't really matter what I think. Uh, we've got some uh, pretty good reasons for telling you the things we tell you, but the reality is we just need to trade the signals as they come, uh, and you too can uh, uh, multiply your... Um, account by six like our friend uh, Brian did by just uh, following some of that uh, good trade craft that I've been teaching you. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, I don't want to run out of time today. Uh, it's very uh, important that we talk about gold because I know a lot of you people are uh, gold bugs or gold buffs or very interested in gold and uh, quite a few of you own <coughs> bulletin and uh, other types of gold. So uh, let's now switch over. Um, and let's have a look at gold now. Uh, Jerry, and uh, uh, I've got your email uh, about outside bars questions from a client, uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, make time to talk to you about how to handle outside bars and how to exit outside bars. So uh, those of you that uh, were interested in that, it's, uh, I haven't forgotten. Uh, it's all going to happen uh, in the fullness of time. Shift, it's a beautiful day up here. I think you guys are getting drowned down in New South Wales from what I can understand. Um, and uh, I uh, have to tell you that uh, Sea Bus Stadium was uh, almost completely empty the other night when uh, Australia was playing in the International Sevens Tournament up here at the Gold Coast. Uh, whatever else the Gold Coast might be good for, it's not a rugby uh, stronghold, uh, but it is the most glorious weather This they call spring up here. Uh, for me, as soon as this webinar's uh, finished, it's a couple of Bloody Marys and uh, and out to the pool. You see, you get uh, so comfortable here. The beach is only about, uh, oh, maybe eight minutes away, uh, but I've got a pool sitting just outside here that's uh, uh, big and brand new and very nice, so that's where I'll be going. But anyway, if you guys are getting drowned down south, um, take heart. I think the weather's clearing for you. If not, get on a plane uh, and come up to Queensland where it's uh, nearly... Well, I can gather it's nearly always sunny and bright. Okay, gold. Let's uh, do the same thing. This is the 24-day chart of gold. Uh, some of you will remember that uh, right at the high of gold, which is right in here, September 2011, <coughs> I was running a tutorial in Colorado Springs, and uh, my good friend under par, who owned a fair chunk of gold bullion, said to me, John, uh, is that the top? Uh, and it was about September the 15th. It was uh, just the beginning of this bar here. He said, is that the top for gold? Uh, and I said, it is for the time being, mate. And um, he did very well selling out at uh, some of his bulletin at least at about uh, 1800 and something dollars because it's now down to 1232 So uh, good things happen at tutorials uh, when, we, when we do them, which is not very often. Okay, so here's your 24-day chart, just to put all of this in perspective for gold. Have a look at this. 
I mean, gold is in an immensely strong position. Um, and unless you happen to be one of the unfortunates who bought gold um, sometime after uh, June 2010, uh, you've had a massive great profit on it if you're a long-term holder of gold. Um, and even now, it's in a very, very strong position uh, if you look at the long-term charts. Now, uh, that may not be what you want to hear, but you haven't got to keep a sense of perspective about that. So uh, what you're looking at here, um, these lines, the two red lines and the black lines, these are the Daniel Code retracement levels. And uh, you won't find them anywhere else. They're not Fibonacci's. They're not. Uh, they're a discrete ratio called the Daniel Code ratio. That uh, um, I'm going to say I invented them, but I didn't really. I actually interpreted uh, some ancient writings, uh, which told me what these levels were. And as those of you who are members and see our charts, these markets just follow these numbers day in, day out. It's quite extraordinary. And all we've done here uh, is we've taken the first step we always do when we're looking for a tracement. We've taken a tracement from the 2011 high to this minor low in August 2008. <coughs> and we've put our retracement tool on there. It's this little fellow over here that uh, um, it's called Dan the Hedgehog. He's our uh, motto. Uh, and if you have the uh, Daniel Code uh, library in Trade Navigator, that's the uh, um, logo that we use for uh, a lot of our Daniel Code stuff. Um, and that's just the standard Daniel Code retracement uh, straight out of the uh, Daniel Code studies box and look what happens. This market comes down, it hits that number and it's held it now for uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, this date back here. Um, we do our switcheroo again here. You can see it first made contact with this number. <coughs> Uh, in the 24-day period ending July 2013 uh, and the market has held it significantly and consistently since then. So uh, we have to say that this market is still in a strong position, uh, although when we look at the blue lines, you can see that it is in a cyclical downtrend. That is it within the Daniel Code trade channel, which is facing down uh, and it is running down there, but it's found support at 11.86. Uh, if it loses that support, you can see the next two numbers on that chart. Uh, let's move from there, <coughs> excuse me, to our 12-day chart. And um, uh, this is um, maybe not so interesting. Let's see what else we've got in here. Uh, yes, this shows you one thing. Here's the same number. This is the 12-day chart, but the same thing happens. Um, what I want to show you is this blue number here, 62. Uh, this is a uh, Daniel Code timing cycle running from uh, the 12-day period, end of July the 9th. Now, if your charts don't match up with my charts exactly, don't be concerned. Um, the days when these individual uh, groups of 6, 12, and 24-day bars end <coughs> are a function of when your data starts. Um, and your data will start depending on what's on the disk <coughs> when you get your data initially from Trade Navigator. Um, and they all tend to be different. I've got um, five different services from Trade Navigator and three of them have, um, uh, have this um, uh, difference in time on them. But as I've said, these uh, timing cycles are valid for plus or minus one period. Uh, so if you happen to be a few days out, it makes no difference at all. Just bear in mind, valid for plus or minus one period. Um, so uh, we've known about this 62-day cycle coming in. This is uh, our traditional support cycle. Um, I'll come back to your uh, question uh, questions in a while, guys. We've got a few good questions coming in. I will make certainly make time to deal with those. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and um, um, that is our uh, traditional support cycle, 62, and it's always shown in blue. Well, I put it in blue anyway, and I invented this stuff, so. I guess I can put it in whatever colours I like, but blue's uh, one of the few colours I can see along with uh, red and black and uh, grey. So uh, it's there, it's very important, and because it's plus or minus valid for one period, uh, it could be exactly where the cursor is now, which is the expiration of the 62 period, uh, which was March, uh, sorry, September 29, September 29. Uh, but look what happens in the next period. Um, the market breaks through that time cycle momentarily. 
hits the Daniel Code retracement number 118680. Uh, the low of that is 11. Uh, that bar is actually 118330, uh, which on a six-day chart is like nothing, um, and it's rallied from there. Now, two weeks ago, uh, at the last webinar, we talked about this, uh, and I told you that this was the probability. Um, so let's go to the six-day chart now. Uh, which will show us in more detail uh, what's been happening in gold. Um, and here it is. It's a scary looking thing here. Uh, so let's uh, bring it up uh, where you can see it and let's simplify it. Uh, and we can get rid of a whole lot of this historical stuff uh, because what we're interested in uh, is uh, where the markets are right now uh, and what's happening here. So let me just tweak this up a bit so you can see it uh, a bit more clearly um, and here we are we're now getting a, uh, a pretty good idea of this uh, okay so um, we've been talking about this uh, you, you folks have seen this every two weeks um, and uh, we've seen how it's just been bouncing off these uh, fourth and fifth seal lines uh, and these time cycles <coughs> and we've uh, given them numbers just to show where the turns were what drove them I've taken off some of the less relevant stuff but the point we were looking for uh, from point five which was October 31 uh, we were looking for a run down to find support at this uh, fourth seal line running through here um, and uh, we saw it latch on to that uh, on the September 19th week don't forget a Daniel code week at six trading days um, the next bar it closed right on that four seal then we had this nice interesting breakdown here and this really turned out uh, to be a false break uh, because it broke below uh, well below the uh, four seal line uh, and in fact went to the linear support so it it ignored the angular support which is the fourth and fifth seal lines and went to the linear support which is the Daniel code uh, retracement ratios 118680 um, and look what's happened here this was our time cycle we've been looking at uh, this is a 44 time cycle this is the time cycle for gold um, it runs so you can be quite clear it runs off this bar here September the 19th um, that's the first uh, low on the way out after the uh, uh, first counter rally high um, and 44 that cycle expired uh, on September the 29th uh, so plus or minus one period uh, we're still valid for the period that expired October the 7th uh, and that's turned out to be a low at the moment uh, and it might be a significant low uh, so from there we're starting to get a rally the interesting point here uh, you may not be able to actually see it quite clearly but uh, we have these important lows here uh, here's the July 2013 low uh, here's this next low at point two uh, and now we now have this new low <coughs> at point six each one of those lows is higher than the previous low uh, it's hard to see but <coughs> excuse me I assure you it's right <coughs> this is a low that's higher than the previous low and this is higher than the previous low so you now have two higher lows um, and those of you who are into charting and those uh, old-fashioned uh, chart patterns um, uh, that were very helpful I guess before the days of the Daniel Code which is uh, precise and accurate and wonderful uh, would know that that's a pretty strong base that's being built there now the question is can the market rally significantly from here uh, and for the answer to that let's go down to a daily chart um, and uh, I think I have it here for you yes I do um, and here is gold on a daily chart now uh, the fourth and fifth seal lines are not designed to work on daily charts but you can see uh, they do uh, often uh, and this one uh, picked the low uh, perfectly uh, and here's the first rally out this was actually an outside bar uh, on Wednesday of this week uh, and it stopped like it had been hit by a truck and that's why it had a fourth seal line uh, sitting right on its head now uh, as you can see from the stochastic at the bottom of the page that market is also overbought at that stage these fourth and fifth seal lines do not need, mean of themselves that the market will be stopped they are support and resistance but unless they're working in conjunction with the known Daniel code time cycle they don't they tend not to be uh, temporary they, they tend to be temporary not terminal 
so we, we know why that market stopped there. There's resistance, uh, and that's why it did what it did. Um, I suggest seeing as the market is so overbought. I'm surprised, incidentally, that there hasn't been any liquidation of gold because a lot of traders uh, hold gold as a store of wealth. They'll have um, uh, funds invested in uh, gold ETFs and gold stocks, and commonly, uh, when there's a rout in the market, um, uh, you know, in the big markets, the equities market, you'll often see gold market, some part of it being liquidated uh, to pay the margin calls. Now, that's not happening in gold, uh, which tells you that this correction in equities uh, is very orderly um, and uh, probably uh, well telegraphed, certainly for you Daniel Code people it was. Um, and um, we haven't seen any forced liquidations in gold. Uh, if we really got to run on to the downside in equities with some significant drama and some big range days, uh, you would see um, you would you would see forced liquidations in gold. Uh, Glenis, um, uh, Bob's having a problem. Has lost sound again. Have you got it? Is it all right? Uh, everyone else got sound all right. I haven't been twiggling that little as yet. Fine. Uh, and Shiv, thank you guys and Charles. <coughs> Bob, you can't hear me I guess, but uh, um, this is uh, recorded so you'll be able to see it later. Um, uh, anyway, thanks all you guys. We've got a terrific team of people here who really respond when I ask my questions. So helpful, I thank you all. Okay, um, so there's gold. The big story of gold is this six-day chart um, and this is the one to focus on. Uh, we have had um, a high low put in now uh, at a known Daniel Code number. We've had compliance with the four seal. We've had the expiration of a time cycle. Uh, this one here, this is the dominant one. Uh, we have more time cycles coming up, but right now all this market's got to do is keep working up to overcome some resistance. I suspect that this corrective pattern, which is which is pretty dramatic if you look at it. I mean, you know, it's run from uh, uh, 1,350 odd. Uh, down to 1224 um, and it's sort of been in this uh, uh, range from let's say 1380 uh, down to uh, 1178, 1170 odd uh, now for um, over a year uh, and I suspect that there's a lot of base building to go on but uh, anyway it's uh, put in its second higher low it should have a decent rally from here follow the Daniel Code signals if you want to know more about this stuff on a uh, a, a more timely basis, uh, you can uh, subscribe or take a trial uh, of uh, some of our um, uh, four seal commentary. For those of you who uh, are not aware of it, uh, let me show you um, uh, on the Daniel Code website. Uh, we cover DAX, S&P, crude oil, natural gas, copper, T-bonds, uh, the US dollar index and gold. Um, and those uh, are all uh, updated with uh, uh, four seal uh, targets, time cycles, and everything else commentary uh, on a weekly basis. So if you'd like to have a closer idea of what markets are doing, uh, ask Terry for a uh, free trial of uh, whichever uh, of those markets you're interested in. You'll find it's very, very good. Okay, so there's the outlook, guys. I think we uh, can summarize by saying we're merely seeing a correction in equities. There's, uh, uh, nothing exciting there except that it's good trading um, and that I hope that there's a, a lot more downside which will trigger some uh, little bit of panic selling which is even better and uh, gold is really uh, the one that's trying for the resurrection trade it's really trying to put in a solid base here um, it's still structurally strong on the long-term chart um, and it's ticked a few boxes now to say that uh, it's well set uh, uh, for a, a decent rally now. Okay, so let us now move, if we may, uh, <coughs> with only about 10 minutes. Uh, we've had a couple of questions about um, outside bars. Um, and um, uh, Jerry uh, and uh, one of his clients um, asked about that. Uh, let me see. Uh, I like to answer these questions while we're doing the webinars. Here it is. Um, okay, this is um, see what I can do here. 
Oh, it's Philip. Yeah, hi, Philip. Uh, it's a the new member uh, with us. His uh, question is about outside bars um, and uh, how they work, how you handle them, um, and um, uh, particularly what the exit strategy is uh, and what's the protocol for the train stops. Okay, thank you. I've got that, guys. Um, let me get organised so I can... Uh, just minimise a few things here. Yeah, okay. Um, this chart, um, this daily chart happens to be gold. Um, the way I've got my chart set up, the uh, inside bars come up as red bars um, and the outside bars <coughs> come out as grey bars. Um, and I suggest uh, that you should set up your charts the same way. Uh, it just makes it uh, very clear what's, uh, what's what. Now, I had a few nice examples here <coughs> which were on a three-day chart which I'm going to go back to but let's <coughs> just have a look at this. Uh, first of all, what happens with an outside bar? When you have a signal for an outside bar that goes against you with the outside bar, you must take what's called the stop and reverse. Uh, so let's uh, expand this and have a look first of all um, at this little box here um, which is going to be uh, this period in here uh, that I've highlighted. So uh, this is gold. Um, I really want the crossbar so I can give you the date so you can follow this a little closer uh, if you want to when you uh, see the replay. <coughs> uh, here is gold. This was a, uh, we're, we're looking at uh, September the 3rd. Um, and uh, right there, uh, you very probably uh, had a buy signal. Uh, this uh, top here, uh, gave you a, a counter trend sell signal, uh, ignoring inside bars as we've talked about in uh, uh, in Tradecraft. Uh, we have one bar down, two bars down. Uh, that automatically means buy the high. So if you were following those uh, rules, you bought the high here um, on uh, September the fourth, <coughs> and <coughs> that's fine <coughs> uh, until it uh, turned around and gave you an outside bar. Uh, and it's called an outside bar because the uh, bar is entirely outside the previous bar. Um, and the low of this bar, the previous bar before, uh, is 1261.9. Uh, and this one uh, bar went down to 1261.3. Uh, so you had an outside bar. The minute it took out uh, the low of the previous bar, which was 1261.9, uh, so at 1261.8, we actually use a, a two-tick buffer um, just uh, because uh, sometimes these markets will spit a tick or two through. Uh, so I would have said at, um, at uh, 1261.7, you had to be short, uh, and that's your mandatory stop and reverse. Now, people get themselves into an awful flux about outside bars. Uh, uh, we, we have some clients, actually, is a great... Uh, uh, example of that is a, a good, great friend of ours. Um, he gets absolutely uh, in a twist about outside bars. And when they come, they can come, they can be rotten damn things. We've had uh, days in the past where we've had 10 and 12 outside bars all on the same day. And, you know, it's quite horrible. Uh, but you have to learn to trade them because they are an integral part of trading. And they're also a huge edge for you if you know how to trade them. So... The basic rule is if you get an outside bar on the day of an entry, you must take the stop and reverse. So uh, it's quite simple. If you bought this bar here, uh, you're long at 1272.6. Uh, your stop loss is two ticks under the setup bar, which had a low of 1261.9. So your stop's at 1261.7. Double that and you're short. So you have a stop that stops out the long trade um, and a new order to sell and you're short there. <coughs> Where does your new stop go? It goes above the intraday high of this outside bar. Uh, and what are the rules on exit? Well, you can, if you want a purely mechanical system, uh, you can exit first profitable close. Uh, that's how our auto trade uh, systems run because uh, for auto trade systems, you don't have any discretion. You have to have a set rule uh, and the rule is exit first profitable close. So in this case, uh, here you were, you got uh, your setup, the bar was 1261.9, you were short at 1261.7, uh, 
Um, you did not get a profitable close. The next day it rallied uh, and the next day it closed at 12.56.30, uh, uh, which is when you would have exited. There's your first profitable close. Um, in other ways, outside bars are a complete blessing. Um, this market then continued to go down. Let me move my uh, cursor over to the highlight again. This market from this period in here continued all the way down here. This trend accelerated to the downside and there was no way to get into it except through this outside bar. That you bought the outside bar, you were forced to go short. So the market was telling you, you follow the Daniel Code rules it was telling you, to go short. If you didn't exit first profitable close, <coughs> look what you got. This market went all the way down here in various stages. Um, you certainly got a lot more money if you'd simply uh, followed the other default rule of uh, use a two bar trailing stop, uh, which means your stop would have been above the high of the highest of the last two bars that have been completed. Do not do this on an intraday basis. Highest high of the last two bars all the way down until the stochastic gets oversold, which it is all the way through here, in which case it moves to a one bar trailing stop. You got stopped out right here. Um, and that's down uh, considerably lower uh, than your trade. So outside bars, very often, I'll tell you exactly where that is, you got stopped out um, at 1239.4. Uh, that's a pretty nice little bit of trading for you. So there was some money in that as well. Uh, through this uh, horrible outside bar uh, that we tend to castigate. Uh, in fact, there was 2,080 uh, or thereabouts per one contract uh, simply from taking that outside bar trade um, and then using our default two bar trailing stop uh, into a one bar trailing stop when the stochastic is oversold. Um, so that was nice and the market gave you that. Uh, even if you were at a one bar trailing stop, I guess, which you would have been all the way down here, uh, you still uh, didn't get stopped out until you uh, pocketed $2,080 per one contract, less what you lost um, on the buy and short. You certainly made money. So don't be frightened of outside bars. Um, as often as not, um, they are a giver of profits. Uh, the other one I want to give you now, don't um, uh, overly uh, panic about this. You might find it confusing <coughs> that <coughs> we're looking at this uh, red area here. And this is what happens when you get an outside bar after an inside bar. Um, here we are. Uh, with inside bars, our entry is that you don't enter on the inside bar. Uh, you enter at the higher blow of, of the last bar that it was not itself an inside bar. In other words, in this case, uh, if you were trying to go short here, uh, you would have been selling at um, 1299.7 was the low of the setup bar. So you are selling at 1299.5. The exception to that rule is when you get an outside bar after an inside bar. And that's exactly what happened here. The outside bar, uh, bar opened. Uh, this is uh, Wednesday, May the 7th, 2014, if you want to look at this on your own charts. Um, the bar opened at 1307.9, rallied to 1315, so it's made a new high. And that means that the minute it trades below the low of the inside bar, which was at 13.044, you could have got short at 13.042. Um, and that got you in considerably earlier uh, than our standard inside bar entry. Um, and that's the exception to the rule uh, on uh, inside bar entry. Uh, if you then exited first profitable close, uh, you got 1470 uh, per trade. Um, so up to you there, the two um, exits folks, either use the standard rule if you want a hard and fast rule, exit first profitable close, or it's always open to you uh, to use a two bar trailing stop until the fast stochastic, that's the 533 stochastic, uh, gets oversold or overbought, um, at which case you will go to um, a one bar trailing stop. Um, and that's, uh, we're up to time is up. Uh, we've had our hour for which I thank you um, and I don't think there's um, uh, many questions to be answered today. Let's have a look. Um, Brian, uh, what exactly is the difference uh, in the equities forecast due to the death or crash cycles having been recognized by the market versus the regular cycles? Um, 
The difference is that the, the, the crash cycle, and, and of course, as is usual with most analysis, uh, we have some ambivalence here. I think when we looked at, first of all, the 24-day chart, Brian, I told you, that is not the death cycle on the 24-day chart uh, because it doesn't come from a high on the first hop, but it does appear on the other charts. Um, it is just um, uh, really, we would say on balance, it's an indication uh, that we're going to get a, a serious correction um, and in this market, a serious correction uh, really uh, means just one standard deviation below the mean. Uh, if we got down to two standard deviations below the mean, I'd be thrilled. Uh, and if it breaks that, folks, we're going to have a new trend. Um, and uh, you'll certainly be the first to know about that. Uh, so fine uh, for that. Okay, Bob, do you have any significant future four seal target time cycles for SBS? Absolutely, Bob. Got them everywhere. Uh, get hold of uh, Terry, support of the DanielCode.com, um, and ask for a uh, free trial to our fourth seal service on the S&P and the DAX, if you like, or any of our other markets there. Um, and um, you will see a far more detailed presentation. Uh, let me go back to uh, see if I did stick something on the You will see a far more detailed presentation uh, on the fourth seal uh, commentary uh, than I am giving you here. Um, dollar SPX, let's see what we've got. Um, what I'm looking for um, is the 62 cycle, uh, which uh, is what you'd be looking for too, because that's the cycle uh, that's going to uh, bottom on this. Okay, Damien. Oh, Damien, nice to see you, mate. It's been a while. Uh, missed a few of you, but I'm glad you're here with us, old fella. Uh, Dad's still down in Adelaide, are you? Uh, any comment on the U.S. midterm election from Schiff? Schiff, I've got to tell you, it's an awful thing. Um, I've been working 14 hours a day uh, for three or four weeks now, and uh, it's quite ridiculous. I haven't been keeping up with the U.S. news. I usually am all over it, as you know, but I've been uh, battling with this uh, new technology uh, for the analysis uh, of uh, Fraxen uh, Pro, and uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to forecast what speed markets will be running at six weeks from now, which uh, is kind of crazy because you can't even forecast the weather um, in any detail <laughs> that far out. But that's what I'm trying to do, and I've got a ton of technology and I've got programs running everywhere, so I've um, been, had a complete change of lifestyle living on the Gold Coast because it gets light so early. I've been bouncing the ball at 4 o'clock in the morning and uh, working until 6 or 7 o'clock at night, by which time I've had it and I start making mistakes. So... Uh, um, that's how I've been uh, sort of knocking off 15, 14, 15 hours a day um, uh, for the last three weeks. I've barely been out of the house to tell you the truth. Uh, so I can't tell you about that. But uh, uh, yes, we really want, we want Rudolph's spy commentary. We want Rudolph. We want Glow Glow. We want some entertainment. For those of you that don't know, the forum at the Daniel Code used to be absolutely outrageous. We had some very, very strange characters. Uh, a couple of which we had to kick out after a while because they're just simply too disruptive. But uh, gee, it was uh, it was it, it was insanity, but it was, it was fun while it was going on. Uh, and two of the famous names, um, uh, Rudolph and uh, Glow Glow, both of whom were particularly uh, close with uh, Shift. <laughs> so, all right, folks, that's it for this uh, this week. Uh, if there's, uh, let's hope there's. Uh, this drama develops at the moment, uh, by my standards, has been pretty bloody tame. I'd like to, uh, we really do need um, um, a good routing of the uh, equity markets. We uh, need some deflation. We need to get some sense back into the world. Um, and we would need a very, very prolonged uh, period uh, to do that because uh, the good Lord knows it certainly got crazy enough. Um, anyway, uh, folks, thanks for your um, attention. Uh, thank you for being with me today. Um, and uh, we'll certainly uh, see you in the next webinar, which will be in two weeks' time, as normal. Um, and if there's anything uh, super exciting uh, that happens before that, we'll certainly be letting you know um, and getting together to talk to you about it. Uh, so thank you. And uh, yes, uh, one more day to go of trading, then uh, do enjoy your weekends. Good night.